Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries. It is May 15th, 2024, and we have quite the solar flare window to discuss the last 24 hours, so let's get into it. Here on my screen, you can see that the sun is exploding at certain times and sometimes more than others, and that's what the study is. So let's talk about those more recent explosions. We have had basically a solar flare. We've had three major solar flares in the last 24 hours. One was a record breaker for the entire solar cycle, just in case you missed that. So about 19 hours ago, we had an X8, X8.79. They actually went in and increased the strength of it after it was reported. And it was on the turning away sunspot side, so it's not going to hit us that hard. But on the turning to us sunspot, which we're going to talk about in a second, that is that is existing. There's a new sunspot coming towards us. When the turning away homie flashed us, the turning towards us homie also flashed us. It was pretty much the whole sun just kind of burped and uh, sent this 4.4. So we almost had an 8.8, x8.8 nearly, and then a 4.4, m4.4. So that was quite the episode. I was texting everybody. Everybody was texting me. We were having quite the fun during this episode yesterday. Now it's been about 19 hours, like I said, and within, let's see, the last six hours, there's been an x3, almost an x4, solar flare from again the sunspot that's turning away so again this one isn't that strong and we don't have to deal with the coronal mass ejections the solar wind we're not going to get aurora from this but we will get aurora from this this little m4 because it did face us in a way and way more likely we're going to get some aurora from this but it won't be that strong and it won't be here for a couple days so you're good but i do need to make a note of this so in the last six hours when we had this x3 you can see that the radiation the x-ray radiation levels have not gone past down m levels without even getting flares this flare is basically just on and it's just shining at us in my opinion uh, a heavy M level X ray radiation. If that's clicking to you guys. So I'm going to look at that. Uh, let's look at the visual a little better. So here's the visual. These are all of our beautiful coronal mass ejections. Every time you see the shrapnel, you can know that's a solar proton storm that was added to that. And there was our big explosion. So there's the solar proton storm on the 11th when we were getting those big auroras. The, the sun didn't stop, it just kept feeding the solar wind with all of these explosions. So that wasn't the X8, but it's going to come out the same spot. X8, there it is, boom. M4, and then you saw there was even more going out, actually more upward and away. But all of that stuff is away to other planets. Let's look at where it went. That M, or sorry, that X8 went towards Mercury. And a few more stuff you could see during that episode, like I said, went behind. It maybe went towards Venus. But um, the M4 that came out, that was all us, I think. And it will continue to be us as the days progress. So let's get a little closer just to really look at the shrapnel that comes off of that X8. Oh, there's a sun diving object. That's why we had to look at this right before the X8, I believe. Or no. It wasn't the X8. It was a different one. Okay, we're good. I didn't see any sun diving, any others. So let's triple check that. So here comes the sun diving object. I'm going to follow it with my mouse. So you can kind of see it when I see it. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. I never see them shoot that direction either. But out comes from that sunspot. That was a big flash on the 14th. And then we're looking, there it is for, that was our X8. Fantastic. So Darn it, there is a sun diving object within that window of time. Ooh, so that makes this more of a complicated report because I'm certainly watching these sun diving objects and it looks like it goes right towards the active sunspot region. And it crosses, like it's, it really went out of its way to travel that direction in my opinion too, which is weird. So I'm glad we caught that, you guys. I'm, I don't know anyone else's channel that really watches those, but... I don't even know what to say because my imagination immediately goes, oh, that's on purpose. 
and but what can I do about that? I'm not going to just claim that. I have no idea why or how that's on purpose, but it feels like it is. The solar wind speed's going down from 400. It's, I mean, going down from 800, let's say. 400's the average, so we're at 500 right now. So solar wind should be chill, but like I said, the, the radiation is really high. The x-ray radiation is just steady. So you might get a little bit more mutation today than expected, not those instant mutations like those flares can do <laughs> those x flares so the sun diving object i think caused this one this one or this one Ooh, maybe it was this one it was on the 14th for sure so i think maybe it caused this and then this happened too interesting Ooh, a little bit extra drama there okay so solar cycle 24 was the last 11 years we're in solar cycle 25 right here so solar cycle 24 the more recent strong one strong solar flare we've had since the x8 was in they said on wikipedia was september 2017 was the most recent stronger than an x8 flare that we had so i think they might be talking about this one for a second i i thought they were talking about this one but that was 2011 so quite a while ago 2017 looks like it's the most recent flare that we had that was stronger than an X8. It was an X11 on September 10th, 2017. So that was pretty close after the, the last major solar eclipse, the Great American Solar Eclipse that we had in August 2017. I remember the world pretty much shifted frequencies at that point and there was a lot of drama. So an X11.88 happened. And I was not studying the solar flares as heavily in this point. I was only studying the, the Schumann resonances, which have responded. So I didn't really get to fully appreciate this when it was happening. But I had started the study at that point. I had just started kind of becoming more public and then mingling with my peers. So when I did at that eclipse, I went there specifically to mingle with peers in this community for disclosure, for science, for spirituality, pretty much for the Earth's ascension. And it was a wonderful time, but it also really, I could tell, we also got blasted with energies and I now know exactly what happened, but back then I was still learning. <laughs> so here it is, number one spot. We did it, you guys. May 14th, X8.5. See, they keep changing it. That's so wild. They won't put it down? <laughs> That's crazy. They keep changing this reading. Even over here, it says 8.7, but now they're classifying as an 8.5. So frustrating, you guys. We do our best when it comes to statistics and numbers. But if you ever took statistics and numbers, you realize that, you know, it's pretty much just a science of exactness with numbers that are not exact. So it's very weird. You can, all the stats that you're doing stats with huh, may not even be accurate. So. You're putting stuff in a nice list, but oops, that's supposed to be 7-9, so not sure what the heck happened there. That happens all the time in science, boys and girls. You just got to keep your eyes open. That's why we're always double-checking and editing each other's work. That's what scientists do, if you can be nice about it. Otherwise, they, the scientists will begin to coop themselves up and do evil experiments somewhere on an asteroid alone, and then we'll be in trouble. So just be nice to your scientists. Be nice to your fellow scientists. Here's the M4 that's coming out and basically giving us all this radiation. This radiation is nothing nothing we haven't seen before. It looks like it's still, it's just a glancing blow. It's not directly at us. It's going farther into space away from Earth. Very good. Very good. So what else do I have to tell you? Oh, solar ham is still down. Let's look at our global consciousness dot and see how it's behaved. Oh, we've done a major... You know, we've done some major activity this morning. I was really struggling to film this video. This is my third take, so this makes total sense to me because <laughs> I definitely was feeling incoherent and frustrated. I was super excited to make this video and then everything went wrong. <laughs> and now we're back at it again. So here is the Russian data. We did get a surge of energy on the 14th into the 15th. This is expected after seeing an X8 I'm, I'm expecting to see something with the Earth 
electromagnetic field and the extremely low frequencies of our brain waves. So I'm glad to see some sort of proof of that. See maybe what happened. We clearly can see that it we had a zero to 40 hertz moment that went beyond what the chart can really talk about to an amplitude of a 66, nothing crazy, very normal looking little blast. So to report the Schumann resonances, so far at least I saw some sanity there. So we've remained in our sanity. Overall, honestly, I think I give you guys all a pat on the back for an excellent job mitigating this energy. Honestly, very well done, everybody. And for those of you who are taking your health more seriously because of this and doing more um, charcoal supplements right before bed to help pull the toxins out of you and doing foot baths with uh, bentonite clay and zeolite and charcoal to help pull all these heavy metals and plastics out of you and all the other free radical whatever nonsense that's in your bloodstream and all that goodies. It's all magnetic at the end of the day. A lot of this stuff is a magnetic charges. So they put stuff in that'll attract stuff like a magnet pretty much and pull the stuff out of you. And chlorella and spirulina supplements can help your body pretty much really, really quickly replace and move all that stuff out of your system with healthier minerals and vitamins and stuff. So Italy's also showing some activity also recently too. So I would say maybe my incoherency and all of our incoherency actually showed up in Italy. It might've been Italy's fault, honestly, for the incoherency I felt this morning, for real. And they've been getting charges the last few days. So here is the 14th, 13th, and the 12th row wise here here we are into the 16th over there in italy they're pretty much on the next day as we're just starting over here no it's the 15th never mind they'll be starting soon but not quite not that soon alexis come on get your times right i'm like looking at the time like wait a minute that's impossible okay <laughs> so italy's got the data we need to show the last few days they've been getting a charge so all of you beautiful people over there in home country Italy over by Rome and all its roads and all of its spiritual epicenterness. How are you feeling? I want your comments below. I need to get all the updates from Italy pretty much all the time and around Washington DC. That would be great. Two major hubs of information as well as South Africa. So it looks like HeartMath actually has some data that we can use. Almost. Mm, from the 13th even. Wow, look at all that. So we have something from our major solar flare day doesn't look like anything significant, though, to tell you. Nothing interesting. Latest earthquakes are happening in Afghanistan. Interesting. A little bit of a different vibe earthquake-wise today. Afghanistan. So whenever I'm starting to see earthquakes build up here, this is, this is a sign. So a sign that there's a changing of times, I would say, with the earth and its war as well so today we might have some updates on the war is my prediction here anywhere else shaking like a leaf that we need to be careful of let's see who is this thailand thailand's data hasn't been accurate for a little while always watch where the lightning is grounding where are the storms happening literal rain literal thunder literal lightning when the solar flares are hitting where are the storms? Because that's immediately where that energy is having to ground. It, it uses that cascade to ground energy from space to our surface in a way to help. It's like a capacitor. Like we have to pass this energy through our planet. So when the flares are going off yesterday, were you by a lightning and thunderstorm? I know a few people who were. And it was an epic, epic moment. And I just love hearing about it because I just love watching human nature succeed and use and utilize the energy spikes of nature to do good, to shift, to evolve. And I was watching that happen with my friends yesterday. And I hope that you're watching that happen with your friends yesterday. I'm going to continue watching the storms. I'm going to continue watching the space weather for all of our sake as that is my duty here and what I've become very useful to do. So you may continue doing what you gotta do with your kids, with your animals, with your parents, your friends, your students, your clients, all of the goodies. So let's see, what are your students, clients, friends, and 
pets and everybody going to be up to today? I would say there's going to be a little more heaviness today. Like I said, that x-ray radiation is a little bit high, literally, and it won't stop. But the pressure on Earth and the solar wind is certainly down. So I would say that we probably will manage today pretty well. I don't think there's going to be many hiccups unless, you know, that incoming solar sunspot starts to flare us even more. We should be okay, I would say, other than the added radiation. So eat stuff to help with radiation levels. Make sure you're hydrated. And I believe that we can make it through the 15th into the 16th. But as you see now, obviously there is a planet continuing to approach the sun. Jupiter is about to move into Gemini, so that whole thing's about to shift. We're all about to shift luck and fortune on because of where Jupiter's going to be hanging out in our sky. So if you're feeling your luck and your fortune change this coming weekend, I would say that makes total sense and go with it. Lean into it, enjoy it, take pictures, write a diary entry about it. I believe this coming weekend is going to have some excellent memories. I know for me it will, and I'm going to make sure of it. I love you all so, so, so very much. Thank you so much for loving me, for supporting this channel, for being interested in the space weather, and for doing your own research and educating yourselves so you can enjoy this conversation and this study and participate in it as soon as possible. I need all of the data I can get. I need all the participants I can get. And if you are behind on my YouTube channel, there is a playlist of classes I've done to explain my thesis, explain all the different things I'm studying, why they're interrelated, and why it has an effect on our psychosociology. So if that's interesting to you, I filmed them a few years ago. You're going to notice I'm young and more naive in them. It's okay. <laughs> I've had to toughen up and kind of hit the ground running with this study. So I have those videos if you need them. Any more questions, please just feel free to DM me on literally any social media you can find me. I'm very, very, very good at social media. I will see your notice, okay? Shout out and I love y'all. Have a beautiful day and onward we go with the crazy unpredictable space weather. Incoming sunspot, let's see what you got. We can take it. Love you guys. Bye. Bubble beep.